And joining me now, Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, Chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, and another name being floated as a possible Secretary of State. Senator, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, do you think you are still in contention? Well, it's great to see you. And just, just to ask, do you think you're still a contender? Have they talked to you about the job? Uh, Andrea, I don't want to get into that. I've had uh, multiple conversations uh, this weekend uh, with, with various people, but uh, look, that's for them to decide and them to announce. I know they're going through a fascinating process where uh, lots of different kinds of people with different kinds of back backgrounds and outlooks and relationships to the president-elect. So uh, I think it's pretty fascinating, and um, I'm, I'm happy for them that they're doing it in the manner that they are. Well, let me ask you about Mitt Romney. We know famously how critical he was during the campaign. Can Donald Trump work with a rival? You have uh, Mitt Romney on Trump's foreign policy. Just a few quotes come to mind. When it comes to foreign policy, Trump is very, very not smart. Trump's Syria and ISIS policy, ridiculous and dangerous. Trump's foreign policies would make America and the world less safe. Trump's bombast is already alarming the allies and fueling the enmity of our en enemies. And in 2012, Romney called Russia the U.S.'s greatest geopolitical foe. Uh, Donald Trump doesn't agree with any of those things, obviously not what he said about him, nor what he says about Russia. So uh, the only person that can decide that, and there's only one person that matters here, and that's President-elect Trump, and apparently he thinks that he can, and that's all that matters. Uh, Andrew, you know, my likely role is going to be to confirm uh, or to lead the confirmation of whoever it is that he nominates, but it's very evident that uh, he feels very comfortable in talking with him, and apparently they had a private conversation where those bygones were, were set aside. So uh, I, again, he's the the, uh, to use an old term, he's the decider here, and uh, it, it sounds like they had a very good meeting. The meeting only lasted one hour. How could all of those issues, their disagreements on foreign policy, their past disputes, be resolved in an hour? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Andrew, there's all kinds of back-channeling that takes place uh, in a transition like this. There are so many people that are involved and so many characters. Uh, many of them, uh, I'm, I'm sure, have had conversations not only with him but those people around him. But I can only guess. I mean, you would have more insights into that, I'm sure, by talking to sources that are dealing with this, something that, that, that I'm not doing. But uh, obviously, uh, I don't think you would bring out someone with a staff that uh, that Mr. Romney has without uh, having some degree of seriousness and wishing to talk with him. And again, I think the process, and I've shared this with them, the process they're going through and looking at people that really represent very different things as far as uh, who they are, where they've been, not necessarily huge ideological differences, but uh, it's pretty fascinating. And uh, they're obviously wanting to go through this in a very diligent way and find the exact person that, that fits where the nation is and where they are relative to foreign policy issues. Well, I want to ask you about Rudy Giuliani. Do you think that Rudy Giuliani, with his business interests, uh, representing some of these foreign entities, he would have to recuse himself. Uh, he's been controversial, but he's very close. He's in the inner circle, and he's openly uh, advertising that he wants the job. Uh, how would he be as Secretary of State? He's not been yeah. known for being tremendously diplomatic yeah. in the past. Well, again, you know, since my job is likely in this case to be con uh, trying to confirm whoever they nominate, uh, I don't want to handicap folks, but obviously I, they do, they've done tremendous background, I'm sure, into those relationships or looking at those things and must feel like that uh, there's a comfort level there that works for them. Obviously, the personalities between the two gentlemen just mentioned are very, very different, but that's what I'm saying that uh, I think is pretty fascinating about what they're doing is they're going through and, and looking at people that represent very different approaches and trying to, to get the one that meshes best with President-elect Trump and where he wants to go. And, you know, the world, as you know, is, is somewhat unsettled by the election. And it's actually an interesting time for America to take advantage and to move ahead and to, to reorient some of the relationships that, uh, that probably need to be reoriented, reoriented a little bit. So it's an interesting time. I think they're trying to find uh, exactly the right person that fits that mix.
Well, let me ask you this. If you are not chosen and if you are leading the confirmation, have they given you an idea of their timetable? Because in the past, we've seen how they wanted to get Condoleezza Rice or Colin Powell or Hillary Clinton confirmed as secretary. They tried by January 20th to have someone in place. Have they given you that time frame, sent any briefing materials up to you? Uh, they have not done so. Uh, my sense is, though, they would want to be on a similar time frame to, to what occurred before, and that is the very first uh, confirmation and hopefully having them in place at the same time the president is sworn in. It's evident they're putting tremendous focus on their national security team by virtue of they're the first people that are being announced. And I think he wants to have all of that set and moving ahead, and I think he sees the tremendous opportunities that he has that are real uh, to really reach out and, and look at foreign policy in a different way that it's, uh, than it's been looked at in the last uh, four to eight years. And fi finally, uh, the, your ranking Democrat, uh, Senator Ben Cardin, told me today that he believes that Donald Trump has to either divest his business holdings, all of his assets, or put them in a blind trust, a real blind trust, not one run by the kids, yeah. presumably. And that's what the Wall Street Journal is saying, that, that it should be liquidated because of things like yeah. The fact that he's got interest in Istanbul, he's got interest in Buenos Aires. There was controversy about that today, denied by the Argentinians. But uh, the fact is, he has business holdings almost everywhere in the world. The meeting he held with Indian businessmen, raising eyebrows. Mm -hmm. What do you think he needs to do? Well, one of the things Ben and I won't be doing is leading confirmation hearings on President-elect Trump. I mean, he is our president. I'm certain that uh, But you have to worry about conflicts of interest with these foreign leaders. No, I mean, no. as foreign relations I, I, chairman, that's in your, no, in your lap. Right. That, that's a good point. I, I, my sense is that they're going to want to do everything they can to make sure that they're not uh, haunted by this for the next four years. I know that they are looking at this in a very, very serious way and making sure they alleviate those. Uh, I know he wants to be very, very successful as a president, and I know the last thing that they want to have happen is just continual stories about this. So I know they're bringing in the best and brightest folks to deal with this. I'm sure they'll deal with it appropriately. Yes, uh, those relationships uh, will be things that will be looked at over time, but uh, uh, they're smart people, I think they understand uh, what will pass muster and what will won't, what won't do that, and I'm, I'm sure they're doing everything they can to make sure that they put something in place that will. Senator Bob Corker, thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Andrea. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.